Hail Cheaters, and welcome to the Always Cheating Podcast. It's Josh. I'm here with Brandon. Brandon, how were you during this crazy Game Week 29? How are you doing? How were you doing? What a wild one. I yeah, mean, ups, uh, downs, I, yeah. Uh, strikes Incredible. and gutters. Definitely more of a gutter-filled week. But there's a lot to sort of pick through in terms of like what a Game Week like this means to dialed-in managers. Dialed-in sure. managers will think, I should have done better, especially ones on yep. free hit like you and I, you would think we should have done better. But right. how much better would you expect to do when you basically just brought in a ragtag team of mercenaries? I got yeah. nothing apart from an assist from Morgan Gibbs White. I still had a game week rank of 1.3 million, which yeah. is which is which is really good. And I yeah. had a, a chunky green arrow. So I was it, 588k, which is crazy. So, so yeah, there you go, even better, million. right? So in that sense, the free hitters, you, you kind of just had to really, on purpose, uh, soil your pants to screw it up. Like there was really <laughs> no way to not get a green arrow if you free hit. But if you didn't free hit, I also feel like you're happy, generally happy with sort of like holding rank holding serve in oh, a way i Every- think you've got to be delighted in, unless you took like a you know unless you took like a minus eight or a minus 12 just to save the free hit but if other, otherwise I, I saw a lot of people who were like i can get to eight on a minus four and that that felt like a totally or seven maybe even seven i feel like i would probably try to i don't know why eight is like some magic number that i have but that felt like the number you needed to to get the cover some of the big right. assets i think what was what was interesting about this one was I don't feel a ton of regret. I mean, first of all, I'm on 27 points, which felt huge, right? Because I had I had Gibbs White, and then I went for uh, Fafana over um, uh, over over uh, Morris, and I you know really was strongly considering Mooney's, and then I I got a little spooked. It wasn't just you talking about Mooney's like possibly being at risk. It was also uh, there was some you know um, there was some news that um, uh, what's his name was 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 back as well. Um, oh. What, what? I'm getting so old all of a sudden, but I cannot remember Give me his a hint. name anymore. Who are we talking about? Uh, Raul, Raul Jimenez. Yeah. See, you yeah. Follow my train of logic there. So it, what, there was a player. Was there a forward who was back for Fulham? It was, it was Raul Jimenez. Yeah, so that right. was, that was, yeah. Um, so that was, but anyway, I got there uh, on my own, thankfully. Uh, but Ra- Raul Jimenez uh, was back as well. And I didn't necessarily think he was going to start, but I, I just sort of thought, well, Mooney's may not play that long. Um, he scores one goal, which, which was fine. And then uh, he scores a second one that he had very little to do with, I would argue. Um, but he was, well, he, he was in, I mean, that's a, right that's place, a box on the you know? box yeah. goal right there, which is sure, what you want. From your yeah. Number nine. Yeah. That's true. When it first happened, I thought it was like, it deflected off his leg. You know, it was almost like he didn't really do anything. And then I, on replay, it was, it was like, like a Lukic goal. More. Yeah. Yeah. But it was kind of, so in, in the end, yeah, he finished on 13 points. So anybody who, like if I had literally just kept the team of the team that I had, it, well, cause I had uh, Anthony Robinson, right. Who finished on um, 11 points. Um, and if I brought in Mooney's, I would have, and then I would have had Dubrovka son. I would have captain son. If I literally just made that one move, I would be on more points than I would have been on my free hit, even with only like six players uh, for this game week. It's, you know, so it's kind of remarkable how you just, you had to get a couple right. And so uh, getting Fafana was, was enough of a difference maker and also having um, um, uh, Gibbs White as, as you did. I sort of like, you know, I was not as high on Gibbs White and then I just sort of, I basically my, my thinking as we got closer Finish to- Finish that statement. The, if as, as high on Gibbs White as- Oh, as you were, yeah. As I was going to say, you and you and many others. I mean, he became a popular pick. I feel like down down ah, the well, there. as, as um, they do after I shout them out on the Always Cheating podcast. Right, that's that's true. That's true. And have we heard from any Mooney's managers who were were upset that you? <laughs> I guess people still got him. You know, we didn't we didn't talk everybody out of. Well, Mooney's, listen, so, yeah, yeah. No, hindsight merchants come for me. I don't care. Sure, and he was and he was subbed in the 60th minute, right? So it was like he didn't he d- didn't play that long. Uh, but and also, I mean, who thought that spurs would would just lay down and, capitulate and, yeah and, I, and I thought the commentary like was spot on in that match and that spurs are just like wildly underprepared now you can't discount yeah. just yeah. how wonderfully fulham played and sure. they did but spurs was just a shadow of any professional outfit you'd expect to see yeah and i i think that it was um it was just kind of a uh, it was just i mean i thought it was just a weird weekend my, my thought process ultimately was 
Um, I just want to fade Luton kind of across the board. Um, just a feeling that like they were going to be completely fried after that massive, you know, like a, a devastating, honestly, four, three loss away to Bournemouth, right? Up three nil at halftime. Humiliating. Four. Um, yeah, yeah. Real, a, a tough loss. Right. And so I thought, okay, let Emasculating. me, um, okay. Like, I think you've, I, I think we're, we're good. Uh, but it was, you know, they, and so I yeah, said so brought in cells, which almost worked out. I mean, that was, that was kind of a bummer. He was on, uh, um, he was on nine points, uh, after, uh, like in the 89th minute. And then they conceded, um, like a, a set piece goal kind of late. And then he got a yellow for time wasting as well. So that was a nice little, little double whammy there. But, um, yeah. And so that was one of the reasons I got gives what is I just thought, well, let me just, let me just have more players, um, in this, in this Luton Metro, not Luton players. And that's why I felt okay not having Morris. I thought he looked completely spent by the end of the, um, the Bournemouth match at midweek. Uh, I did bring in Dottie, uh, who was, you know, subbed off at halftime. Uh, maybe I guess, you know, but again, I mean, Dottie had a corner that, um, you know, there, there was a handball, but like, you know, he actually could have picked up an assist in that match as well. Right. So, um, you know, I, I don't really, so I guess my, the point is I'm on 27 points, but I don't look at my squad and think, Oh, I should have done this. I should have done this. I should have done this. Like, I, there's no scenario where I wouldn't have had Tony or I wouldn't have had Bowen or I wouldn't have had son uh, or I wouldn't have had Madison wouldn't have had Watkins. I mean, it's just it's like, it's just crazy that basically every single uh, that Reggie on Reggie to minus three uh, in that match is crazy. Pedro Poro on one Doty on one. I mean, it's uh, all you can kind of do is, is sort of hope that like the percentages break your way. Right. And every single high percentage player um, didn't right. I mean, like, like Gibbs White was kind of the only player, and he wasn't even like in the in the the full on template, right? He was sort of like a second tier level like kind of template player, right? So, I mean, how do you explain every single FPL asset that everybody want that anybody wanted failing to deliver this week? Like, what's 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 the answer, Brandon? <laughs> I need to know. Well, yeah, I guess like it's it's one of those weeks, but that's that's such a facile sort of description. How do you like? Part of my rubric of looking at this week and the free hit was let me sit down and just project the scores. What do I think is going to happen in any of these matches? There were four right. matches. All four of them went counter to what I had predicted. <laughs> right. <laughs> like in, in an extravagant manner. Um, I mean, I'll go ahead and, and share my team here and then just give us. I want to see. It. Uh, yeah. More more of a detailed view here. Um, I, I really put my chips on my free hit in the Brentford basket because I went with Flecken and goal. I just thought the most cashable thing in game week 29 was going to be Burnley not doing anything yeah. was, and, and, and that was a risk because Brentford had been defending terribly and they were on the road, yeah. but Burnley just, I saw, yeah, I saw, um, Patreon supporter Paul uh, Paul Parsons uh, this this weekend, Brandon, on Saturday, and uh, he and I both suffered through Flecken for about ten weeks, and so we felt like that was uh, that, that. Although it didn't really make a difference in the end, I don't know. Was there was there I, was there a single keeper? I guess Martinez because they didn't count that second goal. Um, he's the one who ended up on five points, right? So yeah, he he kind miraculously of right got some bon- bonus points there. But Reggion mm-hmm. just like really proved like how he has played his way out of the Premier League in less than 365 days. So congratulations <laughs> to him. An absolute <laughs> pitiful uh, career he's had in the Premier League. So he gone. He You're gone. Salty but, tonight. But I thought if if Brentford, I, I liked having a little bit of an edge there with the double Brentford defense. If that clean sheet had come through, and obviously it was nowhere close to coming through. Um, and then I was relatively template across the board with the free hit. Um, maybe Morris and Gibbs white were kind of on the edge there, but huge disappointment in Tony. And I don't know how much Tony was hamstrung by Brentford going down to 10 men because he honestly looks yeah. like he's signed a contract for another club already. He's, he's gone like the Brentford, thought, the Brentford project seems moments. like it's over now. I mean, he said, he set up this for like a great, uh, a visit for a great chance that he blew right when he took that free kick really fast and, um, sells, mm-hmm. uh, or, uh, no, who, uh, yeah, you know, somebody made a great save in that one. And, um, yeah, it was, it was just a really tough, um, I, I thought Tony was okay. And I think he actually, he the yellow card was kind of, it came from, it's a bad tackle, but I think it came from frustration, right? Just feeling like, I can't believe we're, 
I can't sure. we're losing to these yeah. guys. Uh, you know? A striker's <laughs> yellow card. But he, but even yep. so, I mean, you just look at the score, and it's like yep. the big blockbuster score is the deepest person on my bench with Anthony Robinson. Even even yep. still, that green arrow takes me uh, up to 483, which is my highest rank. Wow, look at that. Rank, Eight uh, in a row. Uh, yeah. Wow. So it's still a good run. You would always hope for more. Uh, in mm-hmm. a, when you have the upper hand on a free hit like that. Sure. But so I'm trying to figure out how the story will be remembered because people argued against the free hit going into 29 because the majority of teams playing this week were so poor that it wasn't mm-hmm. worth getting their assets. Right. I, I'm not still not convinced that's true because you think it was set up for a team like Spurs, I mean, even even Fulham proved that they're not a poor squad. Um, I mean, what do you think about that argument? Was well, I mean, the players, this, the players who did, no. the players who did well for me are the players in the bad teams, right? I mean, yeah. getting eight from Fafana and seven from Gibbs White was the difference between a green arrow and, and nothing. Yeah. It was the players that everybody would have had, whether you free hit or not, yeah. that that failed to deliver. And I mean, I don't know. It's like. Having Jared Bowen for a home match is never a bad pick, right? Having James Madison uh, for for a match, having Poro, like these don't feel like crazy, like reckless. And also, I mean, first of all, I think it's fine. Like if you if you didn't free hit, it's you know I I think you probably like that's a that's a plus in your favor at this point. Clearly, right? Uh, Especially if you didn't like wreck your team to put together, to cobble together seven or eight players for, for, you know, for this game week probably worked out in your favor. Right. I saw some people on Twitter um, who, you know, brought in like Moonies, right. Like I was sort of joking about before, like literally like that, that he, he alone would have made the difference. Right. For, for a lot of people. Uh, but also like, uh, you know, you can play the hindsight game, of course, but, but I also think like in general, I'm not convinced that the free hit later on is going to net you that much more anyway. Like it certainly could, but, I mean, if you do it in 37, that's like, I mean, if you do it in 34, I think that's probably the time to do it because it's probably a little bit safer. But 37 is a really tricky double at all times, right? Because usually by the time Game Week 37 rolls around, something like 12 of the teams have absolutely nothing to play for, right? Um, you know, at least at least at least half of the half of the Premier League, right? And then you're in a position where some teams will double and you're going to have to drop um players who like like really good players only play once right that'll be true like in, in game week 34 for example where um one of the teams that won't double would be a team like man city like you're not going to be able to just t- like take a free hit and bring in 11 doublers necessarily i mean you could but it's not necessarily the, the optimal move right so i think like part of the appeal of this double or the of, of free hitting in 29 was that you just um you you know you brought in players for this game week that you don't want to have in your squad otherwise right like there's almost nobody uh, including the players who delivered for me and Gibbs White and Fafana that that I would want going forward. I mean, uh, hilariously, the one player I would want is is Mooney's, who plays who plays Sheffield United in Game Week Thirty. Um, but you know, so I, I don't really, I honestly just don't feel any regret over playing the free hit. Um, I don't think uh, you know. I mean, I just it just feels like a gamble that didn't pan out. Like, but I, I don't know. I mean, like, how often are our son Madison and Poro going to get a you know, combine yeah. five points. How often is Reggion going to get a negative three away to Burnley? Right. Yeah. Like that's a, that's a, that's a match where you absolutely would expect some kind of return from him or Tony. Um, I mean, even, even, you know, Bowen and Kudus and Paqueta all blanking Watkins, who like has barely blanked ever this season blank, you know, it's just sort of like across the board. It was just kind of a, it was just a really kind of freakish game week in a lot of ways. Right? We're, and so we're I, farmers, yeah. Josh, and we're just trying to reap uh, the largest crop possible. The whole uh, going back to the whole concept of playing a double game week. The benefit of playing a double is you get more fixtures for your guys. And yep. I think that the even though we had poor free hits, we still had chunky green arrows, and that proves yep. the theory of just get as many po- uh, fixtures as possible into your game week squad. Now, you know, that that argument then spins toward, like, play the free hit and the double later on. Um, yep. 
But then we can have the argument about, well, I'd rather have the better players. Like the interesting thing about game week 29 was all of our, all the guys that we've relied upon, namely Saka, Foden, Holland, Sala, the Liverpool guys, they just didn't play. Yeah. So we were grasping right. at straws and um, we march on. So yeah, I, I think it's an interesting game week 29 is an interesting lesson uh, that we can look back upon. Yeah. And I mean, the one thing I will say too, is when I look ahead to my game week 30 squad, I, 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 basically there's almost no, no one from game week 29 on that team. Right. And that feels, that feels great. Um, I think, uh, and you know, we've got a couple of weeks to think about what we're going to do for, for, I, I just actually changed my captain in real time as we and I were talking. Whoa, okay. I, I still had it. I still had it on Solanke, uh, from game week 28. So I'm literally setting my bus team in real time, Brandon, as, as you and I, talk I, I will say just, I set my bus team uh, earlier this weekend and I controversially have kept the captain on Dominic Solanke. Will that last Ooh. for two weeks? Perhaps yeah. not, but um, I do love an ever uh, team playing Everton at home. So, what about what about Cole Palmer uh, home though? Burnley home hosting uh, or Chelsea hosting Burnley? I mean, that guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I think especially with Arsenal and Man City playing each other, I think Palmer might end up being the po- a possible consensus pick for game week thirty. the The thing to remember too is that we have two weeks to go until until game week 30. So Cole Palmer has 14 full days to get injured, Brandon, ahead of, ahead of game week 30. And which, international uh, duty. Yeah. Uh, so he's, he'll yep. be on the battlefield. This whole Ben white thing was weird. Like, uh, the, it's just like I've been white, like, and like feuding with the England national team or something like that. It doesn't, doesn't feel, he feels like the most like, yeah, I never like heard him say a single interesting thing in my life. Like it's such a you know it's such a weird great player, thing. great player. Yeah, he seems yeah. Uh, he seems like a corny guy though. Corny, that's a nice okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I so I, I know some people are already looking at game week, uh, you know, uh, about wild card in game week thirty. Uh, personally, that's not what where I what I'm looking at, and I, it just my my rule in general is I don't wild like I don't like to wild card if I look at my team for the game week ahead and I like that team, right? I don't like to, I don't like to wild card from, from a place of theory, right? Like I am going to do this to set myself up for whatever. I, I, I don't, I, you know, I, if I like the team that's in front of me, then that's fine. And I can save, I can just, I'll save a transfer if that's, if that's the case. I actually think um, the move should be fairly easy. Uh, I think in game week 30, because at the moment um, I think it probably makes sense to make a move for, Although I guess it made more sense before this game week. I was thinking I really wanted to bring in like Poro um, or a doggy. And now after this match, I'm like, Ugh. I guess I still want to do it for a home match versus Luton. But I, you know, weirdly, I almost felt like Udo- Udagi was like a slightly more active player. Like I, I, I got to like consider, I want I want to look at some underlying stats for Poro and Udagi over the next few weeks. Go for like, it. I just, I, I continue to feel like, uh, like, like Poro has been kind of diminished now that, like, like, like the importance of Poro has been a little diminished now that Madison's back. It feels like Madison has kind of sucked up some of those, you know, free kicks and things like that. Sure, that might have sure, sure. Yeah. But what about what about Salah, though? So I was looking at my squad for game week 30 and I'm thinking I could even roll a transfer. This seems fine. And <laughs> then I realize, oh, right, Salah, he's out there. It's sort of like yeah. realizing that like uh, like Jason Voorhees just got released from prison or something like that. You're yeah. like, he's out there. He's among us. we got to protect ourselves. Um, I, I mean, we've got two weeks to sort of mull this over. But how have you thought about the the imperative of getting so like to me, yeah. I, 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 I can't really do it seamlessly with my squad. I kind of need to wild card to yeah. nicely get Salah back in. So yeah. now I have to start doing some calculations of what's the cost benefit of saving the wild card and trying to fade Sala for one or two more game weeks. Yeah, I mean it's 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 not easy. I mean I the I, to do it in my case I I mean even on a wild card I think it would get kind of tricky, right? I mean you talked about possibly captaining and Solanke. I don't know how a player like Solanke could survive a wild card if you want to get in Sala, right? Or if you drop Sun who plays Luton at home. Right. I don't like that. Um, I don't like I don't like the idea of dropping Holland just ever, basically. Right. Mm-hmm. But especially not for a home match. Uh, I'm not going to drop Palmer. 
I don't really want to drop Saka, especially if I'm not going to wild card until after 34, and there's a good chance of Arsenal doubling in 34. So I'm not going to drop Watkins, right? And so you sort of like sort of look at it and you're like, there's no way I can have Salah right now, right? It's sort of like there's it, it like I I I honestly think I'm just going to have to go without him in game week 30 because I can't I I really I don't know even like even with a I guess maybe. There, I guess there's no way to have Sun and Salah. That's really what it comes down to. Like, I, can you have Sun, Salah, Holland, and Saka? I think that's a really tricky thing to do unless you go down to, like, all 4.5s for your yeah. defense. No the way bench. we were doing it at the start of the season was no Saka, and that was... Right. Uh, and, and, then, then. Yeah. and then here Foden is as well. So I think it's yeah. Saka and Foden are the ones that get pared down. Maybe Solanke can survive surgery yeah. like that because i don't want to drop Solanke down to somebody like morris or um i mean muni's maybe um right but again you you want to do that before the everton match right or like are you, you no. i i just think like I, again i i if i i kind of like my team enough that i and i i mean i guess the question is is Salah going to be so heavily owned and so highly captained in game week 30 that you need to like consider a wild card you need to consider serious surgery basically just to cover him as a pick right um and i i think the answer is no but uh maybe we have to wait a week and kind of take the temperature <laughs> after the first well, you know just, week or so see what see how much like solid sure. fever there is over the next just to highlight days. it i mean i think it's going to be a real conversation come game week 31 when uh, liverpool hosts sheffield united the basement team Ooh. oh my god at anfield so, right, so maybe then <laughs> <laughs> they host Brighton at Anfield and you're kind of like, OK, but um, then it's Sheffield United at home, Manchester United away. Always a great fixture for Salah, Palace, yeah. Fulham, West Ham, Spurs. Um, yeah, so Liverpool. Yeah, we're going to be talking about them quite a bit. Well, let's yeah, let's, let's do a couple like a, a couple notes then um, for uh, the, the game weeks ahead. Just like the. I, one thing I want to note is that um, so game week thirty again is, is is two weeks off. We have the international break. Uh, do you have any international break plans, Brian? Anything you're doing? You're going to go um, visit your uh, nieces and nephews? All of, yeah, to, yeah. Big. Uh, I'm I'm, I'm still kind of putting it together, but maybe I'm going to throw a family reunion together for next weekend. <laughs> That's great. An, an impromptu like a flash mob style family <laughs> reunion where everyone just. <laughs> Yeah, totally. You tell every member of your family that you urgently need to meet them for coffee yeah. uh, at like a train news. station or something. Yeah. 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 Uh, all right. Well, I, I like this. I like this. I want My to mom will be expecting photos. to say that, uh, you know, I'm having a baby. But uh, then I, I'm like, yeah. well, it's an international break and let's take a look at yeah. the fixture difficulty rating <laughs> yeah, table. You just start, <laughs> or you just start playing some music and you're like, all right, come on. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who loves uh, the new right. beach house? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so I think, um, so we got two weeks to, to, to sort things out a little bit. Uh, it's actually NCAA tournament weekend next week, which is great because I would say traditionally the week that I like care the least about uh, the Premier League and fantasy is is that NCAA tournament week, right? Because it just it just sucks up kind of all of my sports energy for a couple of sure. days. So I'm glad I'm glad the international break is falling this week and it's, I, it's ideal timing. Um, so uh, from my perspective, uh, so double game week 34 announcements should come before the game week 30 deadline. This is this is per Ben Crown. I'm always happy to give him credit because he does such a good job of of um, keeping us. He's know, got that dog in his stuff. Ben He's Krellen got that is. dog in him. Yeah, exactly. A TM. Um, so, you know, I think that he, uh, so, you know, what we know is that, uh, it, it's Coventry, right? It's, it's Coventry, the yep. fourth team. Yep. Yes. Yeah, so we have Coventry, Man United, Man City, and, uh, Chelsea that are through to the semifinal. Kind of an interesting mix. I'm glad that Coventry's in there. I always like when there's one kind of wild card that makes a semifinal round, right? It's like, if it was just four, usually it's like three champion champions league level squads and one blah squad, right? It's like. You know, like I mean, but the Coventry is like a a, a truly oddball. Could have been wolves, right? Wolves yeah, could, could have been, been the wolves. Side. Yeah, <laughs> Crystal Palace. I mean, no offense to any of these clubs, right? But just like like a club where you're like, ah, like that's you know, you just kind of know what's going to happen, right? Because if it was because it'd be like a Premier League fixture, right? It's like a Man City hosts Crystal Palace. It's probably three nil, right? But Coventry City at Wembley, it's like, well, who knows, right? It's like it's sort of um, I don't know. So I'm I'm kind of excited about that. Just like in a kind of like any given. Saturday, you know, you might get something cool out of that. So, so that those, um, 
those are the four teams that are, that are playing the, the semifinals of the Champions League, which means that we have a, a little bit of an idea of what the double game weeks are going to look like. Um, we know for a fact, for example, that Man City, Spurs, Man United, Newcastle, and Chelsea will all double in game week 37. We also know that Chelsea will have a second double in game week 35 or game week 36. That's like a, that's, those are, these are locks, Brandon, uh-huh, yeah. this, this bit of news. Okay. Teams that could double, kind of expected to double if, if they can make it work, um, you know, around European uh, matches and things like that, um, would be that they could double in 34 are quite a, a significant number of teams. Arsenal, Liverpool, Wolves, Bournemouth, Crystal Palace, Everton, and your beloved Sheffield United. Uh, so, Brandon, Oof. I think what's the, the question now is, you you either if you still have your wild card the the decision now is do you wild card to target game week 34 or do you wild card to target game week 37 and my feeling at the moment is i am going to wait <laughs> like i'm just going to wait and and see if we get some more fixed like i i don't want to even really think about it too deeply until we know yeah. what the doubles are going to look like in 34 right my instinct is that my like my preference would be to would be to would be to basically roll with the team I've got into 34, right? See so if game week 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, that's five transfers plus any like hits that you might take or whatever, right? So and I already have some players that that will be doubling in 34, right? So it kind of I think makes sense to to try to see if you can get away with putting together, because you're probably still going to have some single game weakers, right, in 34. So, like, like Man City, for example, some Man City assets. So, at least, at least talent. Um, so, I think that that's, and and then after 34, then 35 would be when I wild card, and the wild card would be really focused on having those teams that double uh, in game week 37. I think that's what makes the most sense for me. But again, it kind of just depends on who doubles in 34, right, and how many. Like, if I have zero players or very few players that are part of that 34 double, then my hand might be forced, right? And I may need to just go ahead and wild card um, early, like like you're considering. Possibly, yeah. I think the hand being forced might come down to Salah. I mean, Liverpool doubling in 34, most probably. Yeah. There's no way I'm not having Salah heading into sure. game week 34. So that right. just might be the wild card done and dusted right there. And I just don't believe... That if the more teams that double, the higher likelihood that you've got strong doublers already, or you don't have to, like like the way managers had to is really just funnel into game wing 29. All their transfers had to be geared toward that. I think there's going to be a wider variety for the latter stages here. And I think you know, you you're not gonna have to struggle to field that many doublers or like the best doublers, the highest ceiling doublers. That's what I'm going to put the stress on is um, do you have the best captainable doubler for 34? Yeah. Do, you, do you have like, do you have the best options? Then you can sort of like plug in the option. That's a good way to, yeah, that's a good way to think about it. So I, I think that's, yeah. And if I, I think that's right. And if you feel like you've got none, and it kind of depends on Trent, right? Like if Trent's back healthy and um, I, th- you know, I don't think it's that hard to get Salah if, if, but again, it, you're right. I mean, it's like game week 31. I think it is hard. It's really, well, I don't know. I mean, I look at my squad right now. I have like, I could turn Sun and Foden into Salah, right? Like it wouldn't, I got a 1.4 million in the bank or something like that. Um, and Sun is 10.1 million, right? So that's what gets me to like, like 11, five. So then I would just need to basically free up 2 million. I mean, I could turn, Foden into a into get you a Louise or whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I get, get it for you tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> amateurs, Brandon. Uh, no, but I think like there's somebody I could find a pay, like, you know, depending on who doubles in 34, a, a Pedro Neto or something like that. Well, yeah, right? Fo- and, Foden's uh, yeah. going to drop uh, off the face of the planet as far as fantasy managers are concerned if City don't double in 34. Right. So, um, yeah, yeah. you know, get it while you can with Mr. Foden. 
Yeah. So, but let's talk, you know, so you and I both, um, just like the check-in, you and I both have a free hit, or excuse me, um, a, a wild card and a bench boost left. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. When you put it like that, it does sound very paltry. It's sort of like, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. We're getting ready to make our like last stand, like Butch Cassidy and Sun, the Sundance yeah. Kid. And I'm like, I've just got like nine bullets left. <laughs> well, you know, it's like our friend Sam Danby just blows through all his chips like the first week, yeah. weeks of the season. The wild card is the most, most powerful chip. Um, I think most can attest. Um, and so, so that's really what I'm looking at. The bench boost, ugh, I, I'm not sure. I'm it's not a, sure I can plan a, a strategy around the bench boost. That's just a, like come what may in one of the double game weeks. Yeah. And it really, it might just depend on which, which double looks better. Yeah. So, so again, I think, I think I just wanted to introduce some of these, um, notes, right? I, I don't, I don't really feel the need to have a, comprehensive plan at the moment um, i'm gonna wait until they announce some of these fixtures hopefully we get some news before game week 30 um and that can sort of dictate our, our strategy a little bit but it's good to know what's coming down the pipe right at least know when certain bands of teams are more likely to double than others right and we can sort of um start to think a little bit about what what might make sense from a you know kind of wild card perspective um i i'm also just curious what your goals are now like you have um it's eight straight green arrows i think i saw uh mm -hmm. when you shared your team a minute ago and uh, i think that's something like i think it's like you like 11 and 12 or something like that and I'm, I'm in kind of a similar similar spot here so what is your like i think you know because it's part of like the when you play an overall rank game and instead of like a head-to-head -head game like it's it, in a head to head. You're like, I just want to win my league. Right. But when you do an overall rank type game, you know, obviously we have many league goals and things like that that are too specific to really get into on this pod. But like from like an overall rank perspective, what or I don't know if you can, I guess if you have many league goals, that's interesting too. But like, you know, what is your kind of updated goal, right? Like goals constantly shift when you, when you play in a big game like this, right? 11 million managers. Sure. So what is, what is your current goal, you know, over the last nine weeks of the season? Top like 100 K. That's the only goal that's, um, that's really as specific as, as I want to get. And I don't think I've come at the top 100 K from this distance before. So I do feel like it feels eminently achievable if things go my way. Yeah. Um, but it, it doesn't feel like it's going to be easy to do that from like a four, yeah. like the current rank is 483 K to jump over roughly 300,000 managers over the course of the next nine weeks. It's yeah. not going to be easy, but that's part of the fun of it. Right. If it yeah. was like, if your goal was, was 400 K or something, it'd be, you know, like uh, less, <laughs> less dramatic or exciting. Yeah. Uh, my goal Although is to not admit, delete my yeah. team. No, I, I, yeah, I, I mean, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I'm with you. Like I'm, I'm at three Oh five and, um, I also have had a nice run of green arrows after a really rough start. Um, you are both very similar boats there, but my, my goal is also 100 K partially because it feels weird. I think to have a goal that's too specific, <laughs> like 50 K doesn't seem achievable. And like 80 K feels like a weird goal to have, like who, <laughs> like who I shoot for 80 K. So like maybe, maybe if I get lucky enough to string together some, some good game weeks, I'll recalibrate to like 75 K or something like that. But at the moment I like hundred K as like a good round number. Like if you and I both finished, in the top 100K this season, after being in like the two millions after game week 14, I feel like we would have to consider this like a, a great, like a, like, I, I don't know if I sort of call the season a success, but I would it'd be like, a, like an achievement to like sticking with it. Right. And just sort of like powering sure. through a, a bad stretch. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's it's, it's definitely relative. Look at game week 10, 3.2 million. Uh, for me, the heady yeah. days of game week three at 517,000. I thought anything was possible then. Hey, you're finally ahead of your game week three team. Yeah. That's yeah. something, you know? Yeah. That, that should have been your goal all along. It's just beat your game week three squad. You know? <laughs> I know game week three, me. <laughs> Not, yeah. not a great version of myself. No, all. no, I remember that version. One of the worst versions of I'm myself. Unshaved, unshowered. <laughs> uh, all right, you know what? The one thing we can also do in this pod, which we haven't had a chance to do in a while because there's been all these midweek and, and Monday fixtures, is we're the top 10 in the Always Treating Super League. And uh, uh, number one in the Always Treating Super League, by the way, Brendan, is number eight in the world. Wow. So uh, that's, a, that's a fun tease for the top 10. So uh, we've got... Uh, 
in 10th, Hendo gone. It, uh, I'll say that. Uh, I'm not going to say the team name and the person's name. I'll just Don't say the it. person's name. Uh, Ismail Mamanani. M- wow. I added one too many M's there. Ismail Mama Niet is in 10th. Joe Costello in 9th. Peter Hefsmo Stige is in 8th. Nick v- Villalaris is in 7th. Really, I love Brandon when reading out these top 10. Get a sense of the international you know, quality of our, of our, you know, of our listenership. Yeah. Uh, Jake Holton is in sixth. Peter Stead in fifth. Uh, Chris McMenamin is in fourth. Uh, Loritz Poost is in third. I feel like Loritz has been in the top 10, like all season long. Um, in second is Christian Larich. And in first, USS Mac Allister, Ben Houghton. 21 points in the week, Brennan, yet he's still 40 points above everybody else in the average between Super League and an eighth in the world. So serious congrats to Ben for an amazing Never season. too late to join the Super League, our free listener mini league with more than 25,000 managers. Just go to alwayscheating.com. My vote yeah. for favorite team name this season does go to Lawrence Putes with 46440-iPhone-12-pro. Hard to beat that team name. <laughs> If you think you if you think you've got something better, let us know. <laughs> it's a great two, Dave. All right, Brandon. Uh, a quick shout out to the Patreon too. Uh, thank you so much, to all the Patreon supporters. Uh, I thought the the Slack was a lot of. Um, well, also, well, for one thing, it's a great place to plan meetups all across the world. You're doing a Toronto meetup soon, right? Yes, I uh, April thirteenth. Uh, let me see. Let me just pull up the calendar to make sure I've got that right. Um, it's a Saturday. Yeah, Saturday, April 13th. If nice. you live in Toronto or the GTA, the Greater Toronto Area, as they call Ooh. it up here, just yeah. hit, hit us up with a DM or email us, hailcheaters at gmail.com. I'm trying to get an idea of how big this group could be, and then I'll figure out the... Uh, you thinking the, like two... like. Two, like three million. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Something akin to my. No, we know that there, we know there's we have Toronto patrons. There's Toronto listeners. So, yeah. um, and yeah, Canadians in general. I've spent sure. the last month. I've been here since January, and I've spent at least the last month scouting out potential like Premier League watching venues for the weekend. And there are a couple where I might be able to reserve a table. So that's why I want to hear from people in right. the GTA who could show up. So yeah, April thirteenth. Yep. Let us know, and we'll call. Let's call it the North American Tour, Josh, because Ooh, I like that. on okay. April thirteenth, it'll be the first ever always cheating Toronto meetup in Canada, and then on the final day of the Premier League season, we, you and I, will be together again in New York City, yes. and we will have our last day of the of the season watch along party live in person, and we'll get a big group together for that as well. That'll be fun. Yeah. And so that'll be uh, my birthday weekend yes. last brand. And so that'll be, it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. Hopefully we'll be, we'll be back at the black horse. I did have a classic black horse weekend, Brandon, with, uh, with a couple of Patreon supporters, in fact, uh, Paul and, and Trevor. So um, yeah, patreon.com is where you can go to um, uh, strategize. I mean, obviously the, the majority of what goes on there is FPL talk, of course, but uh, there's a million different channels and a lot of different ways to uh, meet people who um, may share similar interests to you and do meetups and, and hangs or just talk about movies or um or game week 30 um so you can go to patreon.com slash always cheating to support the podcast uh and brandon let's get into the main thrust of today's podcast okay yes. football season may be over but the action on the floor is heating up whether it's tournament season or the fight for playoff home court there's no shortage of high stakes basketball moments this time of year Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000 with NBA, NHL, and college basketball entries today on Prize Picks. Prize Picks even offers injury insurance so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. This week on Prize Picks, I'm selecting Giannis Antetokounmpo for more than 32.5 points and LeBron James for more than 8.5 assists. Download the app today and use code BLUEWIRE for a first deposit match up to $100. That's code BLUEWIRE on the Prize Picks app for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with Prize Picks. We're driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, 
and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Just go to Indeed.com slash BlueWire right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Uh, which is, uh, as everyone listening knows, uh, this is one of my favorite themes of the season um, because I don't know why. I just think it's fun. I like I like the idea of the FPL season having an epic uh, kind of sweep to it, Brandon. You know, like uh, or a, the narrative that there's a story to the season. It's part of the fun of it, right? Yeah. Because um, you know, somebody was uh, saying recently that they felt like. Um, Sometimes it feels like FPL is like playing a video game on the same level all the time. But I think, Brandon, <laughs> when you <laughs> but when you go through the Kings of the Game Week, the best team week over week, it does not feel that way at all, Brandon. It feels like a an unsolvable puzzle yes. that one must constantly uh, try to. Uh, it's 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 a million piece puzzle that's missing. That's also missing <laughs> yes. like a third of the pieces. Yeah, you know, FPL really, is uh, definitely yeah. a jigsaw puzzle that you buy at a garage sale. And <laughs> exactly, it's gonna hope it's all gonna fit together. Yeah. It's yeah, never exactly. gonna be satisfying. It's gonna be fun <laughs> yeah. at moments, but yeah. never satisfying. Yeah, exactly. When when I when I named my Twitter handle FPL Jigsaw, I think people thought I was going with kind of like a saw, you know, like a saw. Yeah. No, but no, it's it's, it's my elaborate metaphor. In gotcha. Uh, I you know it doesn't help that I use the jigsaw the serial killer image for my, for my Josh. avatar. It is confusing, but I just, I love both things, you know, and I wanted them both to be part of my, my branding. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> all right. So anyway, uh, for anyone who's never listened uh, to a Kings of the Game Week pod, uh, every week the uh, fantasy game puts together the best possible team for, uh, for a particular game week. And uh, that's basically if you had, you could have as many players from any team, if you could, like, right, if you got a five man city players in some cases, or I think there's, I think this first one has four Liverpool players. If you could just basically put together via magic the best possible team for a particular game week, it would look like this. Formations don't matter. Anything that's just the highest players. I mean, I guess you can't have more than five midfielders. Like the 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 fundamental rules of the game still apply, but otherwise, that's that's um, how they do it. And um, the reason it's called Kings of the Game Week for us is because a couple of years ago, Budweiser and what must have been a failed sponsorship uh, idea, uh, decided to uh, sponsor this best possible team each week, and it was called the Budweiser Kings of the Game Week because yes. Budweiser, of course, is the uh, King of beers, Brandon. So they say, you know, I, uh, the, the, this is, we're not doing free advertising for, for Budweiser, sadly, you know? Yeah. But, uh, now, well, I don't know about never, <laughs> never seems a little strong. <laughs> it came with a large enough check, you know, we sure. might, we might have to consider awesome. it, you know, or w- one of their many subsidiaries, you know, there's a lot of, um, they say that word right? Subsidiaries. That's a hard one to say. <laughs> I, kinda, kinda just, yeah. I just let it all <laughs> slip out there. Yeah. Um, all right. So anyway, that, but they, they stopped doing that, but I, something about the idea of Kings of the Game Week as a name always struck me as very funny. So um, we're going to do a review of Game Weeks 21 all the way through this last Game Week, Game Week 29, uh, and just try to remember some of the stories, some of the narratives that took hold over these last handful of Game Weeks. So Brendan, I'm going to kick things off with Game Week 21, okay? Yeah. And I am going to pull it up here for your amusement and infotainment. Please do, yeah. Yeah. All right. So game week 21. Here we go. We've got ourselves a three, four, three formation. And Brandon, look who is right there at the top. Diogo Jota, the oft injured Diogo Jota. Too often. Right? Can't, too often. Too, too often, sadly. Uh, not enough to be trusted, honestly, uh, in fantasy or probably uh, when it comes to actual literal team building for a club like When he's like good, Liverpool. he's good, though. The, the thing about Diogo yeah, Jota true. is it's basically whenever he's fit, he's good for fantasy points. When he breaks down, you can easily jettison him. Like He is the rare fantasy asset that – is frequently injured but never falls into the troll category because That's true. he is That's reliable true. when fit. When he plays, he does well. Yeah. I, I totally agree with that. I, I don't I don't dislike him. I just he is he he is injury prone. I think that's a that's a fair 
assessment. Of, very of, fair, of, yes. Yeah, yeah. So this is a, uh, as you can see, uh, Brandon, this is a very Liverpool-heavy team. Now, this team for Gaming 21, this was uh, mid-January, I believe. If you if you pull these up on your on your screen at home, Brandon, you can see that these, these were the January 12th fixtures, right? So the kind of the first, uh, it was a really chaotic stretch, I have to say. The month of January, I think there were only two two total game weeks in the entire month, right? Because you had the festive fixtures, then you have FA Cup weekend, then you had this run, and then you had um, the the two-week game week, right? Where you had five fixtures one weekend and, and five the next. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of a long stretch. So I have to admit, I don't really remember these 19 points for Jota. I, I just can't remember. Now, this would have been when Salah was, was at AFCON. Um, I know that. And so, that you know, I think he does tend to shine a little bit when he's given kind of a, a central role. But do you remember the, the, a 19-point Jota Hall? Well, I mean, it was a, a smashing of Bournemouth. Uh, that I, but I, I can't picture it. I mean, the, the one thing that I can picture from this game week was the uh, Gabrielle brace. For Arsenal mm, yes. Uh, yes, against yes, Crystal yes. Palace, which as a Sleebo owner, that um, I mean, it was a that's Gabriel uh, goal and uh, assists, uh, an own goal. That's the one that lives that's long right. in the memory. Right. I feel like this might have been a game week in which I was left in the dust a little bit. Um, you you look at all the the scattered hopes and dreams here. You really had to stick with players that you believed in. Darwin came along with the Liverpool Liverpool Hall with double digit yep. returns. You had to not bench Palmer. Like every week that right. Palmer gets double digits, how many managers do we hear from Josh who benched he just Cole to, Palmer? He's going to start him every week. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he had a goal. He had a goal and assist in the FA Cup, right? Yeah. Like uh, the, yeah, uh, today, this morning. It's it's incredible. Yeah, and then was this the Arsenal match against Palace in which Martinelli came on and scored like two goals? In like the like in just an injury time, which is just like a complete yeah, rubbing I, Crystal Palace and Roy Hodgson's face in the I, mud. I, yeah, I I think so. Uh, and uh, I like that Ings is in this squad as well uh, because you always get. Um, I, it just it wouldn't be a, t- a king of the game week brand without a, a true wild card in there. I also love ten points. What a, actually, it's rare for a forward to get ten points. It's a weird yeah. haul, right? That's <laughs> like a. I don't even like know. Like you got a it's two like a point conversion assist. or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like a, maybe a substitute appearance, a goal and assist, and two bonus. You got two like assists like hard, and, and yeah. uh, two full bonus points. So that's that's the okay. eight right there. And <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what, what, he gets no appearance points. Uh, six plus maybe you got a eight. yellow or something. I don't I'm know. Who, who knows? There. Yeah. 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 No, no, two assists plus two bonus would oh, make 10. sense, right? That'd okay, be six yeah, plus he's two on plus, 10 yeah, points. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then you got two yeah. appearance points. Got it. Yeah. A, a 10-pointer for a midfielder, a little more common. I mean, Palmer himself had 10 this week, but but at least that you can understand the different combinations, right? Clean sure. sheets and whatever. Um, so, yeah, and Ho- yeah, Hoyland. I think the other story was uh, Bradley uh, picking up eight this game week as well, and the kind of emergence of him out of nowhere, really. I mean, I, I, I'm not a Liverpool supporter, so I don't like really follow the – the kind of their club team or whatever, but it was kind of shocking. Like it, it just imp- like their, their kind of um, their depth is, is so impressive the way they're sort of bringing all these young players through Right. And the fact that Trent, um, it's, it, I mean, it's kind of interesting actually, because Trent was really, I thought quite poor to start the season, got quite a bit better. And then has really battled injuries the last, you know, few months, but uh, to have a player as good as Bradley kind of available. Right. And he's kind of continued to play well. So it's, yeah. Um, I know it's interesting. And this was yeah, his first phenomenal. start in the premier league, at least um, this season. So, yeah. Um, and then we'll see what he does in game week 22. Well, no spoilers there, but. Ooh, should we, should we go into it now? Let's, <laughs> let's do all right, so that's, it. To string yeah. it together, it's an eight pointer for Connor Bradley in 21. Okay. And surely Ooh. he's the top point getter. Now, if you're watching us on YouTube live, you'll see us sharing the team of the game week here on the screen. You'll see Connor Bradley featured right at the top there with 21 points. Just absolutely yep. insane returns. In an insane game week, game week 22 for defenders, where you had four double-digit returners. In Pickford, Bradley, Shar, who uh, sort of said, Gabrielle, whatever you can do, I can do better. You got an actual I feel a little, I feel a little trolled by Shar, by the way. Okay. His, 
I had him for like 10 weeks and I got, I got nothing. Like I, I got one sh- shady assist on a pen where he kind of dived a little bit. And that was pretty yeah. much odd. I wasn't even getting clean sheets out of him. And then the second I dropped him, it was like goal city from this guy. Like it rediscovered his form. Total goal city. That's, uh, and now uh, Newcastle, all the defenders do is lose. So um, that's, <laughs> that's another conversation. Yeah. Well, then you got rounding, yeah. rounding out these guys is Udagi, somebody we were talking about earlier in the pot. This, like looking at the attacking players, though, Josh, it's a bit of a mash unit. Lots of injured players here. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you know, Elise and Eze both crack this, this uh, game week 22 squad. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a shame that they feel like it's like there, there's, there's, there's like a version of Crystal Palace, like going back to last year, right? Under Patrick Vieira, where they were really fun and interesting and cool, right? And it's like, it's sort of, but it never, all it's like there, and then you have these little, these little moments, right? Where Elise, Elise and Eze are both healthy at the same yeah. time time which almost never seems to happen and and the kind of you know some of the young players um you know click like mitchell they, they you know everything kind of clicks a little bit and they look really good yep. and it's kind of funny because they never really seem seriously at risk of getting relegated and yet it feels like they're kind of just maybe it's just an fpl thing i think from an fpl perspective they've just been kind of irrelevant for I mean, I know like you can have a random one-off week where someone like Eze is a good pick or, you know, but it, it just in general, it doesn't feel like they've, it feels like it's been multiple years since I've really had to seriously consider having a player from their squad, right? Like maybe a defender is like a fourth option or something like that, right? Connor but, Gallagher um, is when he was on loan right. at Palace feels like the last yeah. time. And it was just 20, a matter of, <laughs> yeah, or, yeah, there was yeah. a consistency to that run. For Gallagher and Palace, but yeah, this season it does feel like Palace is maybe just playing in a different league, unfortunately. Yeah, and hopefully, I, I'm still like I like. I mean, you and I had a fun experience at Palace. Uh, it was you know it was a great match. Like it was a great great atmosphere. Like I I you know I I'm 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 not a. I have, I have, you know, love in my heart for Palace, Brandon. I want, I want, I don't want them to go down. I like their, you know, I like their colors. I like their, you know, I, like I, they're like a good, they're a good club. I feel like they have in the Premier League, but um, it just like you just want to see it all click one of these days, right? I suppose so. I do not. I, I don't have. You know, I don't. Love. I don't care as much. You, about yeah, Crystal you Palace. didn't enjoy the hospitality as much. You did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it was fine. I mean, there was a weird fight in the stands where we were, and there wasn't a lot of chill happening there. And fair enough, like you know, I'm a carp. I'm I'm just a tourist in East London, and that's some real, that's some mm-hmm. real stuff. Um, yeah, but yeah, and, I was and, keeping and, my and, negative opinions to myself. But uh, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, Crystal Palace. Good luck in the future. Um, we wish you well. Godspeed. Whatever division that may be. Yeah, whatever, yeah. wherever that may take you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Udogi pops up with 10. Alvarez with 13, which I feel like was was one of the larger Alvarez halls of the season. I mean, he's really been, um, like, he's been an incredibly, cons- and uh, honestly, I guess it's the last handful of game weeks, but he was an incredibly consistent asset for the first, like, 25 weeks or so of the season. Never really giving you, like, captainable returns, right? Like, almost always in that kind of, five to nine range, which is great. I mean, like you can, you can have an amazing season with players like that. Uh, but this was, uh, one of his, one of his top game weeks with 13 points. He, you know, he picked up the, um, uh, I mean, it's kind of remarkable now because, um, you know, I mean, you know, just cause he's been back for, for a while now, but, um, uh, like they really did survive quite a long time without Holland, right? He was out much longer than we expected. It was, I think it was around game week 17 or something uh-huh. like that when he went down. And it was like, at the time there was talk that he might be ready as soon as, that weekend and then suddenly a month later and it was still (laughs) he was still not on the pitch right and i think it even even under this game it took a couple more weeks before he was back on so um yeah it was was a good opportunity for alvarez just eight goals for julian alvarez on the season which is wild to me like if you if you you try to like it, it cast about in your mind you'd think at least 10 at least 10 yeah 10 assists, right? So that's that gives you a sense of how complete he is, right? The, the 10 assists. How many bonus points do you think he has in the season? Don't look. I'm um, not looking. I would say probably 15. 17. Close. 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 I don't know if that was good content or not, but I was curious. Uh, what you, <laughs> I was curious what you thought he had, Brandon. Well, yeah, I, I know uh, enough to not go over. Uh, Price is right rules. Never go over. Yeah, you should have said – 
You should have said one bonus point. That would have been uh, the, the smart move there. <laughs> All right. We're moving on to game week 23 and our boy at the top, Philbert Fodinsky, uh, an incredible moment from, from Phil. I believe it, his full name is Philbert, right? Like the nut. I'm almost positive. That, 100%. That, yeah. It is. We yeah, thought it was Philadelphia he, last week, um, but that turned out to be an right. Academy Award winning film. Somebody, uh, somebody, somebody corrected, corrected us. us said, yeah. no, you're thinking yeah. of Denzel Washington, Tom Hanks. No, this is Philbert. Yeah. Philbert, like the nut, exactly. So I think I think I think it, I think I'm right in this case. Though. I'm not, I don't know why I'd make that up. That'd be that'd be weird. So uh, Foden uh, finished on 20 points. You and I both had Foden for this week. It was kind of a a, a game saving return from from us, <laughs> if I recall. I don't, don't remember having an especially. This would have been the. Um, Let's see. Game week twenty three would have been um, the week, the first, the first weekend of February. I mean, so, uh, shout out a player on this on this Kings of the Game Week squad, and I'll tell you if there was any hope that I had this player. Yeah, I think I'm the, when I look at game week twenty three here, I can tell you quite confidently that. Oh, you know, I think I had Watkins. As sure, well. Well, that was when Watkins headed. That I think it was a way to Sheffield. Yeah, this was the famous match. car wash game. I remember consuming this Aston Villa game while waiting in a long line <laughs> to get my car washed, <laughs> and it was just like my wife was so annoyed. She's like, "How long is this going to take?" And every time I reopened my phone when I um, tried to change up the playlist to try to make everybody happier. Um, were you, were you driving or were you driving? Yeah. Um, yeah. One of these drive through okay. car washes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, but I mean like if you were trying to watch the match, were you, um, Oh no, I was, like, oh, I Leela, wasn't I gotta watching. Watch this. No, I yeah. would have been consuming yeah. through like the foot mob app or something like that. Okay. Got it. Got it. Yeah. But yeah. Would, yeah, this was just another pummeling return for non Watkins owners. And I remember this game week in particular was a battle between, uh, because Sheffield United was, renowned for being a terrible squad. Many yep. people had captained Ollie Watkins going into this match. And um, who would we have captained, Josh, in this match? It wasn't Watkins. <laughs> no, it wasn't Watkins. Was it Holland, perhaps? Was he, yeah, was was this like Holland's like first match back, perhaps? And yeah, that 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 may be the case. Let's see if I can pull up this match here. Um, yeah, so fo- yeah, Ho- Holland Holland did play in this match, yeah, and uh, I'm, I'm, in fact, in fact, in, yeah, in that case, I'm certain I captained him. Yeah, same. Um, he got he, he got an assist in the match. Uh, Foden with a hat trick, uh, De Bruyne with an assist as well. Oh, this is the match where Flecken got an assist. So keeping the FPL goalkeeper assist streak alive, I think like every season, the last few years we've had at least one assist from a from a goalkeeper. They don't call him Flick on for nothing. God, he is bad, right? Aren't you glad you only had to have him for one week? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's terrible. Um, I can't say that he was really to blame for... Oh, <laughs> okay. So he wasn't really to blame for any of the goal score, but there was probably the most comedic moment of the game week was when Flecken just put the ball down without realizing that Fofana was behind him and Fofana just swooped in. To, and I was just like, had this moment of like, is this a professional league that I'm watching? <laughs> a, I was sub- having to be subjected to Burnley hosting Brentford for God's sake. And then that yeah. happened. And then Fofana conspires to blow this opportunity somehow. Oh, that was so painful. I mean, I brought in Fofana. I felt so, you know, like, like so redeemed uh, early on to get the red card. And for, I was like, I actually hoping you take the pen, uh, which, which he did. And I was like, that's okay. Early on, I'm going to, I'm going to get some Fofana chances. He blows chance after chance after chance and then gets quite an easy counterattacking goal. I have to say, like, it was one of those ones where he kind of, he like pointed to where he want, wanted the ball, right? Uh-huh. He was sort of running. He was like, just put it right there and I'm yeah. going to score. And that's exactly what happened. Bowl, it was uh, was then, it Zanka? Was, was, uh, I think it was Zanka, like just nowhere close to being tight yeah, enough on Fofana. Yeah, schooled him. Yeah. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, and that would have been um, good in and of itself. But then actually when they, uh, there's kind of a worthless goal conceded later, although it was useful for for free hitters because um, some people had, um, uh, what's his name, the the Burnley defender whose name I'm going to forget right now, but um, there was he was on a lot of non free hitters benches. Um, Matt and Taylor, so, uh, somebody Taylor, yeah, ta- yeah, ta- yeah, yeah, Taylor, yeah, Chris Taylor. Um, so you know, knocked that out, and it also put him into game winning goal category. So even though he'd missed a zillion chances in that match <laughs> um, because nobody really had bonus points in that match, he was able to pick up two more. Like you know, so he finished on eight points, which was um, honestly the difference between a like a 
a mediocre game week. And I don't know why I'm talking about gaming 29, but we're, 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 the focus right now is on gaming. Oh, we all anyone wants to do week. listening to this podcast is to relive game week 29 over and over, <laughs> over. and over again. It's, yeah. The groundhog's day of, of game week. I know <laughs> it's always tough when there's a bad game week that goes right in the national break. Uh, it guarantees us about nine listeners for, for an episode of the podcast. Uh, you know, it's especially with the international break. So uh, hopefully people will find this Brandon um, like this summer when you're catching up on your FPL content you now in summer, summer 24, exactly. Very evergreen. So, um, yeah, that's, and then Ross, Ross Barkley with a classic Barkley, just nothing than something. Yeah, actually, I have to say, I mean, I, I did watch just because of the double and then the, and then the Sophie benches this weekend, I watched a lot of Ross Barkley over the last three matches and I like watching him play. You know, it's like, he's found his level. Like it's, uh, being a kind of playmaker for, for, for Luton, like, yeah, it feels like he should maybe do a little more, but um, I thought he had some nice moments. Like he's a he's a dangerous player. I don't know. What do you think about Ross Barkley? Well, yeah. Well, I mean, what more do you want him to do? Uh, I think he's playing very. I, I agree that he's found a good team for his skill set. I really respect how he has kind of stepped up to become uh, like a marshal in the midfield for that squad. Yeah. Uh, I I th- like if yeah, not much more miraculously really, yeah. like, like survive, they will have to recruit like hell to get some more players around him. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, Andros Townsend really did not work out as the signing for Luton. Yeah. And they just, um, and I, I kind of like, if you compare Luton to their opponents this week in Nottingham Forest, I really actually like to see promoted clubs do what Luton has done versus what Forest did last season, which Forest is just like, screw our identity, let's bring in 50 players and um, let's just try to, you know, the badge is worth more than um, any continuity. Yeah. Luton have done, I think, a, a great job of creating some continuity for club supporters and new watchers of Luton in the Premier League to be like, oh, this is what Luton is about. Here are the players yeah. that mean things to the club. And Barkley, yeah, I love how he kind of fits into that. And they've scored. They've scored forty two. I, I pulled it up while you were talking. They've, they've scored forty two goals in the season, uh, which is I think the more than I think. I think they're tied with another team for like twelfth overall, right? So it's uh, so yeah, they've they've outscored even though they're in the relegation zone right now. They're in eighteenth place. They've outscored um, like forty percent of the league this season. They've only failed to score team. in two matches this season. That's really which impressive. Is yeah, incredible. Yeah. I know. So they're they're in the relegation zone right now. They're three behind Forest and Everton, uh, four behind Brentford, um, seven behind Palace. So again, even though Crystal Palace, like, it feels like they've ne- they never win a match. I feel like yeah. I can't remember the last time they won a game. I don't even know if they play anymore. We talk all about Luton. We know. never talk about Palace. I don't know. I don't know either. You never. No one ever talks about them. You never see them play, and yet they're never. Like they're never at risk of being relegated. It's I'll tell like you what. Weirdest. After this weekend, Josh, I've got my torch and my pitchfork, and I'm heading straight to the G Tech. I want Brentford Ooh, wow. down. I, I want wow. Brent, Brentford project over. Go away. Wow. That's, when that's Tony leaves this summer, like there's nothing left yeah. for uh, – and Bomo, I, 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 I guess being back was actually exciting this weekend, and I can't yeah. wait to see more of him. Maybe that will supercharge the G-Tech. I did watch, uh, Brandon, you reminded me of a movie called Night of the Hunter last night. Have you ever seen this movie? I never, I'd never seen it before. Robert Mitchum, you familiar mm-hmm. with this from the 50s? No. Great movie. Highly recommend it. Uh, but there was there, the movie has, a, there's a scene where an actual lynch mob breaks out. And it's uh, it's, sh- it's it's in black and white, so it's sort of like shockingly intense. Uh-huh. Um, really, uh, Robert Mitchum's an incredible villain in the movie. I highly recommend uh, checking that out. Nice. I'll check All out right. your review on Letterboxd. Yeah, yeah, please. I, I don't. I didn't really. Uh, I like. I. 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 Yeah, I, I'm not much for the extended reviews in letterbox, and as I just toss a word in there or something, just to kind of remember that I saw it. You know. Um, all right, let's move on to game week 24. Um, we've got, ooh, Rice right at the top there, Declan Rice, who has really emerged. I mean, it's weird because again, I. I don't know that I'll ever have him in fantasy. The problem with being a defensive mid on a good squad in the premier league is you're still going to be priced fairly high right it's like you're not you're not going to be at a fun price where it's sort of appealing to to bring you in right you're always going to be at least five 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 yeah let's see what he's at right now he's at yeah he's at exactly 5.5 um it probably hasn't risen or fallen 
Yeah, he's yeah he he's moved uh, up or down point one on the season, um, and he's got. I mean, you know, it's it's been a like a decent year for him. Let's see, he's got. Um, where are his goals and assists? Oh, I I, see, I scrolled it across there. He's got. Um, yeah, I mean, six goals and five assists is is. I mean, if, if he was. Even five million, I think he'd be in a ton of squads, yeah. right? But I think at five point, but there's something about five point five. It's like it just if you're not going to want to start him every week, and he kind of blocks out some other players you might want. Uh, you may want to have three uh, three Arsenal players, you know, or like have the ability to have three Arsenal players that have kind of higher ceilings. But um, but again, how high? He's the king of this game week, Brandon. So how high, <laughs> how much higher could someone else's ceiling be? Look at this. You've got 12, um, 12 points all across the back. Regian, yep. Barf, Gabrielle, and Saliba, all with 12 points. Yeah. And uh, going back to the whole Gabrielle-Saliba rivalry, people will remember this game week very well. If you were a Saliba mm-hmm. owner, you felt like you finally clawed some yeah. points he struck back. first. Yep. Yep. And then uh, Gabrielle got his goal, and it was um, sickening, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, but it, the rare match where you had two uh, defenders get um, goals and clean sheets and no bonus points. You don't, you don't see that very often. That is rare, the double the double goal, clean sheet, no bonus point uh, from, from those two. Um, and then, uh, yeah, your boy Flecken with uh, seven points as well. I'm shocked that that was the highest return of, of 20 goalkeeper. Right? Seven just doesn't seem very high. Like, you rarely <laughs> see that as the top. There's no clean sheets score. in this league at the moment, yeah. I guess, is what that tells <laughs> no, you. I guess so. I guess so. Uh, it's kind of funny, though, right, because you can kind of see where the, the germ of some of these free hit ideas comes from, right? Because you've got Flecken, you've got Region, uh, Moonies as well. Uh, this is when Moonies started to really emerge. And um, I mean, you know, putting uh, FPL aside, you've got to be so happy from a Fulham perspective, right? I mean, I don't know what he turns into, but um, he can, he can play like that's for sure, right? Totally He's a solid, solid player. The goal in which uh, it was kind of counterattacking in Anthony Robinson who is notoriously goal. terrible at crossing. I mean, uh-huh. Robinson is probably the first player to, to um, get offers or higher bidders uh, or suitors, I guess you'd call them. He has had yeah. an incredible season, but the way Muniz then controls at controls with one touch slots it in with the next, that yeah. to me is the full evolution of a number nine where Muniz comes yeah. into the season as a, am I gonna, even going to get minutes? I've never scored yeah. a goal in the Premier League to that yeah. goal. And yeah. um, I mean, Armando Broja, not fit to make the squad. I think maybe yeah. they're filing uh, some sort of uh, annulment papers on you that think there loan. Be a, Kim, a Kim Kallstrom situation going on here. Like yeah. Arsenal's famous player they bought with the broken back. Yeah, I, I don't know. And I think it's, it's just impressive to me because like I'm sure – he could live off his father's residuals, right? He must have set up some kind of trust fund for him, right? So it's like yeah, when you're Malcolm when you're in the middle of, is was a Malcolm huge middle, still so, in syndication. So. You can watch it pretty much it's, anywhere now, still. So, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Brian Cranston really that was kind of his breakthrough. Breakthrough, you know, yeah, lots of lots of stars well. that owe their their yeah. uh, success. So for him to, to still, for, for, yeah, for him to still have that fire, Brandon, clearly playing for the remarkable. love of the game. Yeah, exactly. So uh, congrats to him. Uh, then we have our first kind of big Holland performance. Holland gets a brace. Um, and uh, let's see. I guess, you know, I mean, it's interesting. I guess the the story really was this was when Arsenal, I had kind of written them off from a, less from a fantasy perspective, more from like, could they win the title perspective? I just, they didn't, you know, they had a really rough run in December and it was like, uh, like they had that West Ham match. Remember they lost it at home and it was like, okay, this is, this is my, it's just going to be another kind of, you know, not, not a full on collapse, another kind of disappointing season. And this was, this was the match where it was like, oh, I can't remember what the final score was. It was, um, uh, yeah, I guess it was, it was, you know, it was, no, this is five I, I got my game weeks wrong. Yeah. Five nil. I had to, I had to update the, um, game week score at the bottom here. Yeah. So that was like the match where it was like, okay, like, um, like maybe they could actually pull this, you know, pull something off here. Um, and, uh, cause it just, it was, a, it was such a complete performance. Right. Uh, and I think Declan Rice, it's, it's appropriate that he oh, wait, is this the, was the West, of the week. West Ham six. No. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. I, I caught, I caught up. You caught up. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it took me a second to catch up as well. This is great, great content though. Uh, but it was, uh, yeah. So it was, yeah. And, and that was a way too, way to West Ham. So, um, yeah. An awesome, awesome week for them. And then, yeah, Bruno Gamara has uh, shown up with 15 points. I feel like it's been kind of a, 
I, I don't know. I don't know how much you hold him responsible for some of the failings at Newcastle. It feels like he has not shine like shown quite as brightly as he did last year, right? Like he's never like a great fantasy asset, but um, I don't know. The, the returns are similar. The uh, club is so reliant year, on that so. full starting eleven being fit, and yeah, what Pope out still. It's it. Yeah, they're toast. Yeah, they really need uh, Joe Linton to um, to return. Like he's shocking Joe like Linton. possibly <laughs> Joel Joel Linton jo, Joe Linton I don't know how I, I, jo, I, I do you know how to say it well, why are you correcting my pronunciation do you know how to say it, it just sounded to me like you just called him <laughs> Joe Linton I kind of did but I but calling him Joel Linton you've got it doesn't matter well. how you pronounce it but you just got to kind of pretend you just sort of sort of just be like Joe Linton Joe Linton yeah it's, it's like we're Charlison which is not a not a not a word that that you know like uh just stumbles out of your mouth no. right it's like you got to really think about that one, Richard. Um, although I was and Joe, yeah, Linton. yeah. Although I was saying that it, it took me a while to get uh, Pierre Emerick Aubameyang uh, out of my mouth, right when he first joined the Premier League. Sure. It was like a, you know, it was like I could never quite, and it, you know, I let people shorten it to Amr, uh, to Abba. But at some point, you're like, yes, Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, of course. Like, how could I have ever? <laughs> How could I have ever not known that? The rest of my life, I'll remember how to how to say Pierre Emerick Aubameyang. Brennan. Sure. And what about Pierre Emir? Hoyberg, have I got that right? Let the fact checkers. Yeah, Pierre Emil Hoyberg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah, and, I, and I'm probably yeah. And is, is even Emmerich? Is it Emmerich? Whatever. You know. Now, now that I've, I'm I'm leaking confidence all of a sudden, Brandon. But what other got that one right at all? Uh, right, let's move on to game week 25, though, Brandon. Before we linger on my pronunciations any further, game week 25 was the McAllister match. Oh, brother. Uh, he finished on <laughs> 17 points. <laughs> this is yeah. basically like, uh, this is midway through the semester where your teacher is like, all right, I'm going to need you all to read this book in the next week. And you're just kind of like, oh, groan. Grapes of Wrath. This was this is the this Grapes is, of Wrath Kings of the Game Week. This was a tricky game week because it was the, uh, it was the double uh, for Liverpool and uh, Liverpool and Man City. Uh, yet we didn't really know what was happening with Holland. Um, right. And there were a bunch of injuries and, uh, I brought in on a hit, I brought in, um, Joda and, uh, Darwin and they, uh, combined for a goal in the first half of that Liverpool match and like the Liverpool's first match. And I was like, Oh, this is, this is incredible. Like uh-huh. this is gonna, <laughs> what incredible, you know, they, they were playing Brentford. I was like, what, you know, the amazing sort of great finish from Darwin. It's like, he's finally found his confidence. Uh, Darwin goes off at, I actually think, I think, um, Jota went off like at the 30th minute and then Darwin went off at halftime and suddenly I had no Liverpool players <laughs> for the next 135 minutes of, of match. And, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was, that was a, a pretty tricky double this one. Yeah. And the triple captain on Erling Holland and you don't yeah, want to see your crack the king of the game. Oh, if your triple <laughs> captain doesn't hit Kings of the game week, you done something wrong. I'm yeah. Afraid. Yeah. He did outscore Solanke by a one point. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, I mean, now it's sort of, I, I guess we just, I, I don't mind the decision. I think, I, I think, I don't think we did anything wrong with this one necessarily, but certainly it does seem like the people who've held their triple captain are going to have lots of opportunities, uh, in game week 34, 36, 37 to, to double, uh, especially with a team like Liverpool where they're only really playing for the premier league now, right? They're out of the FA cup. They're out of, um, I mean, they're, they're in Europe, but they're in the Europa league, right? Like they're certainly not going to prioritize that over, um, over the, over the premier league. So, um, I do think that there's gonna be some really good double chances later, but I think for, at least we cracked double digits with Holland. I think he got two points in the first match and eight in the second, if I remember correctly. Bless this man. Uh, yeah. And then yeah, Kanji Walker dunk, just junk all around Brandon. Uh, yeah. G- Gakpo. That was, oh, I gross. guess that was the pick. Okay. Yeah. It was, there was, there was just really, <laughs> and he, and he only got minutes, right? Because, uh, cause Darwin went off. So it was, it, yeah, this was, um, yeah, this was a, this is a game week to forget, Brent. So we're gonna we're gonna move on, okay? Let's move right on to game week twenty six, okay? This would have been um, the last weekend of February. I remember it well, Brent. It was very cold, unsurprisingly, very yeah. cold and bitter in New York that weekend. But you know who wasn't feeling bitter was Jared Gerard Bowen, Brendan, to finish on 20 points in game week 26. Uh, kind of right after everybody sold him for, for doublers in yep. game week 25. So it was a, kind of a dream scenario for me, someone who hadn't had Bowen all season, uh, to see everybody sell him ahead of this great return. Sure. Um, <laughs> you had him as well, right? And I think you were also I one sold of, him for Jota for the double in game week 25. 
And (laughs) I mean, ultimately, I think Bowen owners have been relatively vindicated in that he's just kind of popping up. Yeah, there's uh, there's Doing nothing that. there's nothing that disproves the people who sold him, but there's everything to vindicate the people who held him. So everyone yeah. is kind of winning right now in their own yeah. weird way. That's uh, true. That's true. Yeah, he just jerks in and out of man. Like I don't know. It's like he starts. I, I guess he's fine. I mean, like in the end. It's like you look at the end of the season and his numbers are good and he's doing stuff and he's just not a superstar, right? And and that's fine. Like he's just a he's a very good player who is a bit streaky, right? And uh, is prone to. I think like he he's, got, I, he's got superstar potential. He's just playing in a weird West Ham team right now. A West Ham team that, as we discussed, I think on our Patreon pod, is doing better than I think West Ham supporters want to let on. But still, I think. If you're in a um, a team that's Ant- with Antonio coming in and out, it's clear that however Moyes set out to play without Antonio ha- didn't fully take hold. And Antonio coming back in has kind of helped. And I don't know. It's very odd. But I could see if Bowen – I could see Bowen basically becoming Diogo Jota at Liverpool. Say, imagine a scenario in which Klopp was still at Liverpool. Jota didn't exist. I could see Bowen yeah. doing what Jota is doing there right now. Yeah, I guess that's true. I, there's something about him. He doesn't seem like hugely athletic to me, but I, 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 I can't tell if it's just like a body shape sort of thing. I don't know. It's like uh, I feel like everyone at, at Liverpool is like super like athletic and like I feel I, I don't know, but like maybe I'm just. I don't know. He, he plays 90. All, I don't know. It's like, uh, yeah, I was like, where is this coming he, from? What have you seen from Bowen that, uh, it doesn't seem like a, like a super athlete to me. Like he's, <laughs> he's a very, he feels like one of those guys that comes up from the championship is okay. like really good, but doesn't quite like, yeah. Like they have like a little bit of like a ceiling. And I think sometimes athleticism is the, is the problem. Yeah. You, you, know, you sound like my gym be. teacher when I was trying to qualify for like a presidential <laughs> fitness test, trying to Listen, climb the yeah. rope. Listen, if you're like Nikola Jokic, then it's fine. You know, like it's, I mean, I'm not, he's not quite at that level though. Right. So I don't know. Um, all right. Well, that's, uh, let's, let's look at who else we've got in game week. Douglas Louise, got, I think has to, yeah. uh, be mentioned here because yes, perennially well, underrated. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess it's sort of like everyone, he, he teeters on this edge of great player, great midfielder. Is he a fantasy asset though? Right. And look across this midfield. Bowen, Douglas Louise, Kai Havertz, Jordan Ayu, and Leon Bailey. It's a no one no one more than seven point five million, I think. Yeah, yeah. This is a very affordable Kings of the Game Week. Even across the back, American Chris Richards, Calvin Basie at uh, Fulham, Aiden Nuri, Emerson. And uh, the lesser Emerson yeah. Ederson in goal That's for true. Manchester City. This is this is this is an eleven you could buy for about fifty five million pounds, Brandon. I so went down to the store <laughs> and I bought. I don't under. Yeah, no people are like I don't understand <laughs> but, what the big yeah. deal is with fantasy. <laughs> Went to the Dollar and General and I got this. 60 million pounds, exactly. So as I do wonder if that is like a possible version of the game where you literally just like, I guess this is like kind of like a daily fantasy type thing, but like where you literally just feel the new squad every single weekend. Like that would be an yeah. kind of interesting challenge, wouldn't it? Oh, for um, sure. I don't know. Maybe that would, yeah, like, that, I, I, you know, I could see that I could see some of the downsides here, but like if you basically had all of the FPL rules, except you were able to field an entirely new 11, maybe it's too much work for, for many people, but um, yeah, it's interesting idea um probably a path to, to frustration but you'd certainly see more variability in in, in yes. teams that's for sure um all right let's move on to game week 27 uh oh there he is philbert someone said dr phil foden yeah we, uh, phil is just a name that lends itself to a lot of um a lot of nicknaming doesn't it brown i mean we, sure. we we now know that he officially is he is named philbert after the sure. nut but before before we knew that you know it was sort of there were a lot of possibilities sure i can see that. the i can see the headlines now uh, phil foden comes off the bench to score a game winning uh, goal and the headline is phil in <laughs> exactly this is like you could use that for anything like uh, yeah any, any newspaper <laughs> Um, all right. So you have, uh, a lot of, a lot more Arsenal. Again, the Arsenal just started to dominate the Kings of the game week. Uh, Kyrior, who's become, um, a really nice kind of, I don't even really know. I mean, is he just, I, I, he might just be better than Zinchenko. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not certain. Clearly. It's sort of funny. Cause like, and Zinchenko struggled with injuries so much that 
it's like, remember there was this idea that he was going to be like a yeah. midfielder, right? It was like, he was basically going to be like Havertz or something. And he's basically been so injured that all he does is sort of pop on and play like left back, right? When he's, when he's available. So, um, well, yeah, and I, I don't think he's been very good at that has been the problem is he yeah. just gets skinned alive when he's on the defensive. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's kind of like a, a Trent where he was playing the inverted fullback and when Arsenal was in possession, it was fine. But yeah. in terms of Arsenal transitioning to out of possession, it was horrible. And yeah. Quivior seems much better suited for that and, you know, I guess commendable to the, the coaching staff yeah. there at Arsenal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, another, uh, Martinelli who's, I guess he started to come on a little bit this season. Still, it's still a pretty frustrating year from him, but, um, uh, battled with some injuries as well, I suppose. Um, yeah. And then, uh, yeah. Mooney's again, popping up here. Areola with 13. This was the match when many of us benched Areola. Um, yeah, the pen save. And then he also got, I think they were, they were way to Everton. He also got, um, like, I think just like nine saves in that match as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, Phil Foden once again. Uh, and then, uh, and then Wilson who like Harry Wilson has had a, it's, I think honestly, it, it's a testament to how well Fulham have done this season that a wide variety of Fulham players have shown up in this Kings of the game week, right? Bassey, Mooney's Wilson. I, I wonder if we've seen, um, um, have we seen the, um, who's the Arsenal, um, Awobi. player, um, Awobi. have we seen a Wobby yet on this, uh, Kings nah, yeah. we, we might, we might next week though. Um, so yeah. And then, and then Watkins just like, it's so interesting, like the, the way certain players just pop up again and again and again and Watkins, it's like, we don't even talk about when we do these Kings of the game weeks recap because he shows up so often. Right. But he's just incredibly, this is an incredibly strong, incredibly consistent season. So, um, yeah, yeah. credit to him. Uh, Bowden as well, honestly. Um, all right, Brendan, that brings us to game week 28. Nope, sadly, you know, if it wasn't for the double game week, maybe we would have seen a Wobie here. But uh, we've got uh, Sun with 17, uh, Semenyo. I think he was really the the secret kind of underground star of, of yeah. game week 28. We often get asked questions like, if I want to be a little different for a double game week, who do I go with? And, um, you know, he he was kind of, he was one of those he was one of those ideas and um, I, he was hard for people to get in myself included. Right. Because it, it made sense, I think to default to, um, to Salaki, right. Cause he's been so good this season. He's a, uh, he's sort of a, a double threat, right. Cause he can also create chances right? double threat yeah. fan, fantasy wise. And he's on penalties. Uh, but, yeah. It would be crazy to give up yeah. Holland or, uh, or Watkins. I mean, one would say, I'm not sure if it's true, to get yeah. both Solanke and Semenyo, and that was the problem. Yeah, exactly. And with the blank, it was like if you were going to do it, um, uh, it made more sense to go with Carlton Morris, right, because he played in 29. Yeah. If Bournemouth had played in, in 29, I actually think that really would have changed things. I, I don't think I would have um, free hit, for example. I would have probably just sort of muddled through with that one. Yeah, um, Probably true for many of us. Um, so, yeah, just a really interesting um, – uh, game week. I mean, uh, thankfully we got a really good match out of it, right? That was something we talked about on last week's pod, which is that sometimes fantasy doesn't go great, but as long as you're still having fun watching games, it kind of redeems itself a little bit. And uh, and that four three was was terrific, right? The um, the the Bournemouth um, Luton match, and so um, and and we all got like a little bit of something out of that match, right? Like a, you know, especially just the uh, the the goal and two bonus points from Solanke sort of made us all feel a little bit better about you know bringing him in and captaining him for that game week two things to um, say so, here yep bruno mm-hmm. fernandez what are you doing here uh there's the door <laughs> please use it um, yeah B- ben white second king of the game week team in a row i want to know what does an assistant coach on the english national team have to say to ben white that's that bad also like it's- what does anyone have to say to ben white ever like the the <laughs> The world's seemingly like least interesting fullback. Um, I mean, he looks cool. He's got cool tattoos. We're going tattoos. in on him twice because th- that's exactly what I was saying before. We're just like we're he's he's getting the the real what for on this podcast, Brennan. I just like don't if you don't want to be there, Ben White. Don't make it about some drama. You don't even have to talk to the media. Okay. Just go. Yeah. You- you don't want to hold Geo Reyna situation. Yeah, like here. people yeah, who yeah. who make drama over national teams uh, are losers, in my opinion. Jeez, you're you're really <laughs> you're you're salty tonight. I'm I trying like to it. bring some strong, uh, opinions, some yeah. strong opinions here. You know, that's yeah. content. 
That's true. That's true. The anger. You're bringing the anger tonight. That's for sure. That's a, one side of it. I, you know, I'm bringing the joy though. So it works sure. out, you know, <laughs> I'm all, I'm all, I'm all lightness and fun and uh, you're, you know, you're, you're rage. And I think sure. that's good. It's a good balance. You know, you're like yes. Lewis Black over here. Just like really, really going for it. <laughs> yeah. I would love if, if Lewis Black just decided I'm only doing uh, football content from now on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I want. I want. I, I would listen to a whole special of that, Brent. I listen to a forty-eight minute you, uh, Netflix special. Yes. Uh, of him doing that. All right. That brings us to game week twenty-nine. Uh, wow. So you actually could have fielded a ninety-nine point team in, in, in game week. I'm <laughs> no actually kind conceivable of shocked. way to get to a hundred unless you had a triple captain or a bench boost. That's true. It's literally impossible. That is kind of that is kind of remarkable, isn't it? Um, so. Yeah, let's see. We'll start at the back here. Robinson, Castagna. I mean, the trick really was to go all in on Fulham. Um, Leno, Robinson, Castagna, Lokic, Munis. There's literally five Fulham players uh, in this in this best 11. And uh, I have owned Robinson all season. I hate that I didn't have him for this one. I had Lukic at the start of the year, actually. And so he, he picked up a goal in this one as well. His first ever um, Premier League goal. So, you know, that's a bit well, of good fortune. Go. <laughs> no, I didn't keep him. Yeah. And um, yeah, Sufal, I was shocked that uh, I think Sufal has now seven assists on the season. He's which been was, doing well uh, of late, yeah, for sure. Sneaky. He came yeah. into a free hit draft that I had cooking, and then it was just kind of down to what do I think is going to happen in this West Ham Villa game? And with yeah. both teams to score, I just augured away from both uh, defenders, like both Villa or yeah. West Ham defenders. And I knew, and I said, I said to you, this game week is going to come down to which version of Fulham shows up against Spurs because we were right. all on a free hit, going to go full triple Spurs. Yep. And yep. Fulham had the ability to shut that down. Yeah. But but Spurs equally had the ability, if they actually were ready for that match, to bring us some fantasy gold, uh, and it just didn't happen. Yeah. I guess the upside, such as it is, is that it wasn't like if you'd gone all in on Brentford, that would have worked out well or whatever, right? It wasn't like, you know, like if like Captain Tony actually would have been even worse than Sun, for yeah. example, right? So it was hard to like, that's why I'm not like going to sweat this game weight too much because it was hard to see a path, like like an alternate version of my free hit that like worked out really great right i really feel bad for managers who did captain tony i was very close myself it just felt it felt i mean we it was his birthday for god's sake i know and it just couldn't have gone any worse and i feel like uh, i don't know if it would have been much different if reggion hadn't got that red card because burnley really just Uh, came flying out of the gates and they were ready for that match. And I think it really just did drive home how bad Brentford or uh, how bad their form is currently. I mean, Burnley were like only scoring, like they weren't practically scoring own goals on themselves. And that like, no, was that the, no, actually I think that was, um, uh, was that Luton? I, there was some, I, I can't remember who it was now. Maybe it was Burnley. So like there was like a, like an own goal that was conceded or like, like right away and in that in that match like a like a back pass um was it cells who made the save on that you yes that? oh no you're um, thinking yeah. of burnley you're thinking of. Burnley. oh yeah i'm thinking I, i'm thinking of burnley yeah yeah uh well anyway uh yeah it was um uh just just a weird week and chris wood is the only one that i sl- i mean it kind of worked out fine eight from fafana versus nine for wood but he was the one that i i did actually kind of want this this weekend uh, but i just was too worried about the awani idea like the idea that he might start over wood um especially because wood had blanked the week before and so that that spooked me just enough uh and then uh, wood scored early nice goal too like uh the whole the whole goal was was really nice kind of start to finish sure was yeah yeah um, uh, Morgan Gibbs White um, passed to, to Wood. So uh, yeah, so that's your. Th- there is a ninety-nine point version of a team, even in the worst game week that most of us have ever seen. Uh, you still could have had almost a hundred points if you put it all together. Uh, if, actually, you would have had to break the rules of FPL in this case, Brandon, because you you would have had to somehow find a way to field five fill-in players. But let's say you could. Let's say you could break the rules of FPL, and this is sure. this is the team that you would have. There's no chip for uh, that. It, yeah. There should be. There really should be yeah. a break FPL chip. Ooh, I think I like that, the idea of that chip. All right, well, that is your pod. Uh, thank you so much uh, to everyone for listening. Um, enjoy 
the week off. We'll be back uh, next Sunday with our Game Week 30 preview. Um, and uh, Brennan, do you want to thank our producer patrons? Absolutely. Thanks, as always, to our Patreon supporters and most of all our producers for sticking with us through this season. Mike DiPietro, Trevor Ingerson, our buddy Chris Howell, Bob Escoon, James Holland, Dave Wagner, Lodal, Nick Wright, Lazaros, Yanos. Uh, you keep you're deleting something. You're moving the running oh, order. I guess. <laughs> sorry. I keep sorry. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. All right, Lazarus Yanos. That was okay, Lazarus Yanos, Jesse Halstead, Bruce Kerr, Brian Chin, Blair Jacobs, and Todd Byerly, Andy Portlock, at FPL Merch, Kerry Swanson, Jefferson Turner, Buffalo Wild Mings, Francis Moore, Sam Shower, Caleb Robbie, Vulgar Paulson Kruger, Alex Holcomb, James Keatley, the Saint, Bob Fox, Craig Jackson. Shalin F. Kadakia, Terrence O'Donnell, Heath Cram, Thomas Tislov, Noah and Louise, Travis Grant, Linus Vennerstrom, Dan Parsons, James C., Matthew Skinner, Fro Jacobs, and Brennan, Daniel Hart, Lolly, Ben Coombs, Eric Kite, Gareth H., Rune Sandberg, and Brian Clark. Watch this episode back on YouTube to see our teams, to see all the kings of the game week shared on screen. That's right. Go to our YouTube page, youtube.com slash at always cheating. Hit that live tab. That's where you can catch future episodes of the always cheating pod rate review, wherever you get your podcast, follow us wherever you get your social media, follow and go to our website. You can't really follow a website. Can you, you got always cheating.com RSS. Sure. RSS I guess throw RSS. it in your read, yeah. readly, yeah. readly. Yeah. Whatever. Feedly. Yeah. Feedly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, sounds good. R.I.P. R.I.P. Google Google Reader. All right. Thanks, everyone, for listening. And we'll be back uh, next week. Bye.